Well, first off, excuse the perhaps rambling nature because this is a very raw reaction. I have studied Dune for a while, so hopefully I'll be more informed than a lot of other breakdowns, but this is very much my gut reaction to the trailer. And for the most part, I did like it. From a general point of view, it's very, very strong, very excellent in terms of cinematography and music, but if you have read the books and you know Dune at a more detailed level, it may raise a few problematic questions. I will start off non-spoiler and then against the spoilers and then forewarn people. All right, so let's begin with the strong and good parts, which is the focus on Chani and Paul, which is in the books, but here it's being perhaps overly emphasized, but I get it. You need a focus, and that is the focus. And I am surprised what they're doing with Uriolon. I'm still a little nervous because the leaks are saying she's on Arrakis, which she is at the conclusion, but she should not be on Arrakis midway through the story. So I'm hoping that's Jedi Prime, but she seems to be speaking to some kind of object. So she is basically narrating a part of the story, but I wonder where is she and why is she dressed like that? Is she dressed for someone? Is this how she dresses normally? A few questions, but I do think Pew will do a very good job. Will it be believable that Paul will... Again, I guess pleasing enough to be associated with her, we'll have to wait and see. Again, this is non spoiler, but yeah, they have a role together at the end of the story. And then we get to Fade, and I'll be pretty blunt, I do not like what they did with Fade. I understand that, yes, Austin is a good performer. I saw Elvis. I thought Elvis was very good. He is a very good actor. I do think he's very credible as a ferocious version of Fade, but even if you don't know the books, I really don't like this version. I really don't like it a lot. It just makes the Harkonnens very one note. They're all looking the same. It's Apocalypse Now. I understand it's an influence, but I just did not like it. But he does look ferocious. He looks very well trained. He's not big and bulky, but he does look muscular. He's a credible threat, but I, I just don't like the look of Fade. That's me. And that gets us to Jessica, who has her weirdo tattoos. And I double-checked the books. As far as I know, that's not canonical. Why are they doing that? Denise says, oh, it's giving us insight into the darkness. I think she looked damn silly. But does Rebecca still look very beautiful and tough? Yes, but I just think the face tattoos were a little bit too much for me. So they, they don't rank highly in this. However, this did have a lot of high points. Again, we're keeping it non-spoiler, but Lady Margot, yes, she looked amazing. Very brief, but she looks very seductive. And that is important because she will be seducing someone critical in the story. So hopefully they're keeping that part of the plot line. So she looked amazing. And again, overall, what we got with the Fremen, very impressive. It looks real. Yes, there's a lot of CGI, of course. I did not like the way Stilgar was talking to Paul. It sounded way too modern. Like, uh, don't try to impress her. Don't be fancy. And I'm like, this doesn't sound like Frank Herbert's language. I get it, it's an adaptation, but so it didn't sound right, but that said, they looked very authentic. This very much looks a lot better than part one, where they were still kind of trying to figure out the culture of the Fremen. This looks like they've really managed to capture, this is a desert dwelling, cave dwelling people, so they look appropriate, and their celebration of Paul makes sense. It's a little fancy and overdone, but I did like it, for the most part. Now we're going to get into the spoilers, and there's no nice way of putting it. Are they setting up the Hitler twist with Paul? I think the back and forth with Jessica was very strong. and does give you hints that Paul is not the hero. There is a lot of anger and rage inside his body. The problem is the beginning of the trailer with him and Chani falling in love. It just feels very imbalanced. So, I don't know. But they are giving us good hints that, yes. A certain inner Hitler will arise. And if people start complaining, it's in the books, just double check. Hitler is actually explicitly named. And then we get to another twist, which I was shocked that they give away, is Gurney. So they are confirming Gurney is alive, or at least is alive for a part of the story. And that raises, I think, the most important question. Where is the Emperor? Where is the Mentat? We don't see Stefan. I don't think we see the Sardaukar, but that could have been the Sardaukar very briefly. We don't see the guild. I do think we see some of the Bene Gesserit, but yeah, a lot of the players are missing. No Emperor. We do see the Baron. We do see the Beast, but the guild, 
a lot of people are missing, and it's not clear why. I'll double check. Maybe the people handing off the spice are the guild? I don't know. So, again, the guild have been framed differently in the different versions of the film. Sometimes we see them with different costumes, even though they're part of the same organization. But no navigator, no emperor. So, a lot of questions about people not showing up. I assume this is for the second trailer, but... For what we got, really interesting stuff, but... I hope they're not going to dumb it down to noble hero father dead and I need revenge, a la Star Wars. Because this does stylistically look a lot like Star Wars and a lot like David Lynch, too. I was surprised how much did he borrow from David Lynch for this one, but still looks very impressive. And I don't mind them borrowing, but I don't like they're drifting a little bit too much from the core mythology. That's very high expectations, and I hope they'll just keep to the core, fingers crossed, for Dune Part 2.